given that f of x is equal to a to the power of x, so just by the way, this is an exponential graph. Sometimes students get it confused with the parabola, where a is bigger than zero, passing through the point, da 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 da. And then g of x is this graph. Now, this is a parabola. Okay, prove that a is equal to a half. Now, that's a very easy question, because if we know that f of x is equal to a to the power of x, you just literally need to plug in a point, and they've given us the point. Thanks. So you can just say one quarter equals to a to the power of two. Um, you would then, some students then think, wait, do we have to take logs here? No, you don't have to take logs here. You would have to take logs if it looked like this instead. You see there's slight little differences, okay? So you don't need to take logs for this one. Here you just take the square root. Um, you take the square root. Now, technically you should say plus and minus whenever you take a square root. And if you take the square root of a quarter, you should get plus or minus a half. But they said that A is a positive number. They said A must be positive. And so therefore we can say therefore a is um, a half. Easy two marks in the bag. 7.2, determine the equation of f minus one. Now, I've actually recently started getting quite a lot of questions from students and they call this the derivative. Guys, that's not the derivative. I know it looks very similar, but this is a derivative. This is called the first derivative which is when you do calculus. And then when there's a minus one, then it's the inverse, okay? So to find the inverse of an equation, remember this is where we do our two-step process. I'll quickly make a little note for you guys. Step one, switch X and Y around. Step two, get Y alone. So if we, if we, they want us to find the inverse. So what I do first is I write out the original equation using y. So I say a half to the power of x. That's the original. Step one, switch x and y around. So I go like this. Step two, get y alone again. Now you need to use logs. Whenever the thing you are looking for is the exponent, then you need to use logs. Did you know, well, you probably do, but just to remind you that the inverse of an exponential is a log graph and the inverse of a log graph is an exponential. So immediately, if they give you an exponential and they ask you to find the inverse of that, you must get a log graph as your final answer. And so the way logs works, logs are quite weird, hey? but it, what you should eventually find is that y is equal to log of a half x. Each student has their own way of remembering the order for logs. I'm not going to try to go with like a specific method, but yeah, you just got to understand how to reverse exponentials and logs around. And so that is the final answer. So we can say that y is equal to log half x. Right, 7.3, determine the equation of y, which, which is equal to h, where h is the reflection of f in the x-axis, okay? So let's give that some careful thought. I'm going to place a random point over here, where its coordinates would be minus 2 and 3. That's just a random point that I'm choosing. What would happen to that point? if I reflect it in the x-axis. Now, remember your x-axis is this one. So if I reflect that point in the x-axis, it would go like that. It would go down, okay? And so what would happen is that this coordinate would end up becoming, the x value will stay the same because it's not going left or right, but the y value would come, become the opposite of what it currently is. And so your y value would become negative three. So what little summary could we make? We can say that when you reflect across x-axis, the y-value flips sign. OK? 
okay? So if we, if we wanna work out the equation of H, they said that H is the reflection of F in the X axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out the equation of F, okay? And I'm now gonna change it to Y. Now, we said that when you reflect across the x-axis, Kevin went and he raised the last part, we said that the y value flips. So the y value becomes the opposite of what it was. So all I do is I take this equation and I literally make the y value the opposite of what it was. So I make it negative y. And then of course, I must get y by itself again. And so I just do that by dividing with a negative. And so I get that, but now they have asked us to call this H. And so we can say, therefore, H of X must be negative a half to the power of X. Last question, how must the domain X values, remember domain is X values, how must the domain of G, what is G? Oh, G was this one. How must that one be restricted so that its inverse, is a function. Ah, okay. So we need to do a little bit of a summary on the inverse of a parabola. So we know that a normal parabola, which is g of x equals to 4x squared, that is a parabola that is about as basic as they come. You, It has not moved up or down, and it has not moved left and right. So that parabola probably looks something like that. Right, now, when you take the inverse of a parabola, then what happens is that the graph ends up going on its side. So it does stuff like this, right? It does things like that, okay? So let's say, for example, this one is gonna do something like this. So this is the inverse. And g of x, maybe I could use a different color. So this is g of x and this is the inverse. We had something called the vertical line test. Okay, there was something called the vertical line test. What is it? It is a nice way to determine if something is a function or not. How does it work? draw a, let me just erase that equation quickly, draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph. If it cuts once, then it's a function. Cuts more than once, not a function. That's what the vertical line test is. Okay, so what I mean is, let's say we draw a vertical line through the parabola. Let me do that again. If I draw a vertical line through the parabola, how many times does it cut the parabola? It only cuts the parabola once. So because of that, it's a function. We know that a parabola is a function. We've been doing functions since grade nine or since grade 10 for parabolas. Um, but if I, if, I, um, if I draw a vertical line through the inverse, we have a problem. Can you see that it cuts the inverse more than once? It cuts it there and it cuts it there. And so that is not a function. So what they are asking us is how must the X values of G, which is the green graph, how much, how must we restrict that so that the inverse will be a function? Well, if we want the inverse to be a function, then we cannot have a vertical line cutting twice like that because then it's not a function. So how do we fix that? It's very simple. We do the following. You either, only use this half over here, okay? Or you only use this half over here. 
Because what would happen now, if you have to take the inverse of just that little piece, it would look something like this, okay? And if you take the inverse of this one, it would look something like that, okay? And so what we can see now is that if you had to do a vertical line test, you could see that that is a function. Vertical line only cuts once, vertical line only cuts once. So how do we answer this? How must the domain be restricted? You can tell them that X must either be, X can either be all the numbers that are um, smaller than or equal to zero, smaller than or equal to zero, that would be like this. Can you see it? That those X values are smaller than or equal to zero. Or, or you can say that X can be any numbers bigger than or equal to zero. And that would be like this. But you can't have them happening at the same time. You can't have, um, you can't have the parabola, the complete parabola, because then as soon as you take the inverse, when it turns on its side, then you're going to have a vertical line that will cut more than once. And so the inverse won't be a function. Okay, so that is how you answer um, a question like that.